said it, he has done it. Father, we thank you. We open our eyes and our ears of understanding to hear from you. We want to see you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Follow you more nearly. Day by day. I want to see you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Follow you more nearly. Day by day. We want to see you more clearly. Love you more dearly. And follow you. Follow you more nearly. We'll sing it two more times. I want to see you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Follow you more nearly. Can you stop the instrument? Can you stop the instrument? We want to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, follow you more nearly. Just stop the instrument. Let us just sing it. We want to see you more clearly, love. Father, we thank you. May you open our eyes and our ears of understanding. He says the seeing eyes and the hearing ears, the Lord ordains them both. We pray that our eyes of understanding is enlightened as we look into your word and receive of you. That which has the enablement to change us, to change our heart, to change our perception. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so today, welcome your neighbor to church. Say you're welcome to church. You're welcome to church. God bless you. I'm glad to see you all. And yeah, again, thanks to pastor is not around, but it's... Uh, of the same mandate that we are doing everything we're doing. So can we just celebrate Pastor Nife? So I don't know if I'm allowed to share this to the whole house. Am I? Okay. So uh, at the moment, uh, Love Dominion is start trying to start up a branch in Lagos. That's part of the reasons why he's, he's not there. So... Uh, if you know anyone in Lagos, Nigeria, for now, that would be the first place, I think so, in Nigeria, then other places. So it's uh, part of why he's there and they're trying to get everything to start running. So it would be nice not to just say, oh, hallelujah, glory, but also pray for them, hallelujah. Just pray for them because people prayed us into what we are experiencing now. It might not be people in Love Dominion, but now we're in Love Dominion because Pastor didn't start uh, ministering in love in Georgia, so he started way back. So he had people he worked with, so he would receive words of prophecies. Oh, this will happen in your life. That will happen. so people prayed it out with him, right? So what's going on in Love Dominion is amazing. Hearts are changing. The power of God being made manifest in the lives of people. It's not uh, mere words. It's not enticing words that make those things happen. It's the power of God, right? So same, please. Pray for the Love Dominion Church in Lagos. Also pray. There is a branch in uh, UK now at the moment. So you also pray for them, uh, led by Pastor Jewel. So please pray for them. There is, uh, we have a couple of Love Dominion uh, campuses here and there. But just 
pray for every love dominion extension, even for the body of Christ in general, because the move of God is not only love dominion, right? So God is not only here. He's in every gathering of the saints. Did I make sense? Yeah, so you've got to pray for them too, that as people go there, as they gather together, that there will be changes in their heart. The, the real essence of the gospel will be manifested in their heart. Hallelujah. All right, so today I just... I will just share thought lines, but at first I had a different topic, but in the preparation, it was more like into something else. So I will just not give out the topic I have in mind, then media will figure it out. <laughs> no, at the end, it will make sense at the end. So they will, the topic will be easier for them to get it at the end. So I just want us to start from somewhere, Philemon chapter one. Yeah, thanks. It, we, it's still in, yeah. Verse 7, I, I want to, why I need this is just for Greek word. I'm not, when it comes to pronunciations, uh, I'm from the tribe called Igbo. So my English might sound very funny, or it, I might not even pronounce them right, but that's not what changes a man, right? So it's the power of God. All right, so just listen attentively, and I believe we'll be blessed. So Philemon chapter 1. Verse, let's do verse 6. Let's start from verse 4 actually and just see. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have towards the Lord Jesus and towards all saints. He now says that the sharing of your faith may become effective. So that word effective may become effectual. So that's what I wanted to let me, let me see that. It may become effectual. So that word effectual is what I want us to see. That the sharing of your faith may become effective. Another word for that effective is active, operational, functional. So if you have your gadget, you can download a Bible called Eastward. It's free online. It will help you in studying. Why we advise this is some words in Greek and English are not exactly the same. Am I making sense? So some words that, Greek has more words than English words. So sometimes they use the same word for many things so, and then they just put one word there. So it will be good for you to have it in your, for your own study. So when you're studying the Bible, you can even say, what does this mean? Huh? Maybe it will help you a little, all right? So do that. So that the communication of your faith may become active, may become effective, may become operative, may become powerful. So that is what that effective means there. So it means that the communication of your faith may become more active, more operative, more powerful. How? By acknowledging. So that word acknowledging there is by coming to full discernment, full understanding of what of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So how will the communication of your faith become more powerful, become more effective, become more operational? It is by coming to full understanding, that is acknowledging. So that acknowledging there is ep epignosis. I think I got that one right. So it means, it means that you've come to completely understand so you are, as you are acknowledging, so acknowledging does not just mean, oh, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. That's not the acknowledging Paul stopped in there. The acknowledging that he's referring there is, I know what I've got. I know the full potency of what I've got. I know the full capacity of what I've got. Hallelujah. So by coming to know the full capacity, the full potency or the how what you've got works in you and through you then the communication of your faith will become more operative more active more powerful so it means that how effective or how powerful your faith communication will be is rest on the on how much acknowledgement of what is at work in you that you have it's an inverse related, so sorry, uh, uh, not inverse, uh, directly proportional. So inverse means as you're knowing, then one is going down. One is going up, one is going up. Now, but it's directly proportional, meaning that the more you come to acknowledge what 
every good gift that you've received in Christ Jesus, the more the communication of your faith becomes more what? Effective. Becomes more what? Powerful. Becomes more what? Active. Hallelujah. So what makes your faith more active is right acknowledging. Coming to know full discernment, actually. Let's see Colossians 2. We've started just having conversations and I think we ended up in bearing fruit or something. I think that's where we actually... But just see this. Just see it. Colossians 2. From verse... Let's do one. For I want you to know... Uh, da, 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 this is about Lidosia. Verse 2. That their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches... Of the full assurance of what? Understanding. To the knowledge of what? Of the mysteries of God. Both of the Father and of Christ. What happens in this understanding? In whom are hidden all what? Treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So, it says that they may come to full assurance of understanding. That they may come and understand fully. In this understanding. There are hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's why Paul says, I want to count every other thing I know but dung, so that I will gain the excellency of the knowledge. Are, the knowledge of Christ is excellent. I don't know how to explain it. So it's, it's higher than every other knowledge. But maybe, let's see, in this, where did we read? Yeah, in understanding, in, in the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of Christ. But let's see something. I want us to see something in the parable of the sower before we move forward, right? In uh, Matthew 13, actually the parable is in two places. It's in, it's in all the Gospels, right? But I would want us to use Luke 8 and Matthew 13 to just see something. Just follow me. Luke 8, let's start with Luke 8 from verse 4. I don't need this anymore. Thank you. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke a parable. He spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, as the, and the birds of the earth devoured it. So, Listen, just follow this parable, right? Some fell on a rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and shook it. But others fell on the good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop hundredfold. When da, 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 da. So let's see, verse, from verse 9. So, the disciples asked him, saying, what does this parable mean? And he said to them, to you it has been given to do what? To know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But, the rest of, of, but to the rest it is given in parables. Why? Seeing that they may not see. Hearing that they may not what? Understand. So there is a link between full understanding. What most times, the problem we have in the body of Christ is lack of understanding. Most times we just hear stuff and we don't even assimilate it deep enough to understand it. Right? So, in hearing, they may not understand. Now, he now says, now the, this is the parable, uh, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. The devil comes and takes it away takes away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. But the, but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. And these have no roots, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are shook with the cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring forth what? No fruit to what? 
maturity, no fruit to perfection. So the plan of God, remember, in John 15, he says, I am the vine, the true vine. And whoever, you cannot do anything without me. And whoever is with the vine is going to bear fruit. And they that bear fruit, the Father is going to prune to bear much fruit, right? So, but you have to be in the vine. So he says that those that fell among thorns, what happened? They could not bring forth fruit unto righteousness, unto perfection, unto maturity. Meaning, they just hear the word with joy, and then they let the cares of the world to choke it. But keep following me, because it might be like, oh, where was I? I think we are in, uh, we're going to 15 now. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who have, having heard the word with a noble and a good heart, they keep it. And then what happens? They bear fruit with what? Patience. So it means they bring forth fruit with what? They bring forth fruit with what? Meaning that the fruit bearing takes time. But they kept the word. So they didn't allow the word to be stolen. How did they keep the word? Because Luke just wrote it like this. Let's see Matthew 18. Matthew 13, sorry. Then before we now move, 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 move into seed, bearing fruits and all. So I, I, would, I would want us to, maybe let's just read from verse, from verse 3. I didn't want it to be. Behold, then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on the stony places where they did not have much earth. And they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. Hmm. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprang up and shook them. But others fell on the good ground and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, we're still going, verse, verse 10, because after this parable, these guys will now come and meet Jesus. We need you to explain what you just told us, right? Because don't give a parable a meaning. Like, you need the person that gave you the parable to explain it to you. So, he, they go to this guy, they go to Jesus as always, from verse 10. From verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see. Hearing they do not what? Hear. Nor do they what? understand so he now said in Isaiah's and uh, and in in them the prophecy will be fulfilled so the problem is they are hearing but they are not coming to understanding they are not coming to full discernment full acknowledging of what is at work in them because when you understand something that is at work in you it becomes more of you like it's it's now personalized because the scriptures was not written only to our generation. It was not written only to me and to you. It's written to the everybody, to believers. Actually, God died for the whole world. So, but now, the difference in how what is at work in you will be more effective is how much of the understanding of what is at work have you grabbed? Am I making sense? How much of how have you discerned fully what is at work in you? Because he says, actually, you are not the people that are in hearing they will not hear. You are not in that category. Because he says, least they will hear and believe and be saved from their sins. So the conversation now is not about hearing. Because you've heard. Because you have now been saved. He says, after that you heard the gospel of your salvation. Can everybody say Jesus is Lord? Can we say it again? Jesus is Lord. Good. So it means you cannot say Jesus is Lord. First Corinthians 12. You cannot say Jesus is Lord, but by the enablement of the Holy Ghost. 
So, meaning that what prompted you to make this utterance? I know I just said say it, but then what enabled you to say it is the power of the Holy Ghost. So, it means you are saved. So, it means you are not the one that in hearing they will not hear. Right? But the problem with what we are now seeing at work is how much of what we've heard have we assimilated. Because it's in the right understanding that we will start seeing fruits. The end goal is not for us to just sit down and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear and hear. The end goal is for us to bring forth fruit unto righteousness, unto maturity, unto perfection. Now, those fruits can only come by right understanding of the word. So it means you need to know what God has done for you. You need to know how what God has done for you works out in you. So, in Philemon, he says that the communication of your faith will become more effective by acknowledging, by coming to completely understand every good thing that is at work in you. You, you need to sit down one day. Actually, you, when you go home as believers, you need to meditate on certain things. You need to be, you need to be, Asking the spirit inside of you questions. I don't know. Don't, don't just sit and just, and just believe in. And, no, 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 no. Because understanding comes by the enablement of the Holy Ghost. What I'm just teaching now, I can just show scriptures, we teach, we explain. Then it, it might not really completely make sense to you here. But then you go home and then you just meditate on something. And then the Holy Ghost helps you to link it to another scripture and another scripture. Now it has moved beyond what I just told you. You now have an understanding beyond what I said. Because the Holy Ghost himself has also quickened another scripture to support the one that is more alive to you. Because this scripture is alive. But not every verse is alive to everybody. There are scriptures like Rome, uh, 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 2 Corinthians 5.21. For he has made him who knew no sin to be seen. That we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That scripture is not quickened in everybody's heart. Because anytime I, I'm trying, I'm just doing my thing. And I remember, I, oh, he has made him who knew no sin. That I might become the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. It's quickened. So there are scriptures that have also been quickened to you. Like that. That whenever you remember, it stirs up something in you. So now. Those, those ones, you've gained a, a, an understanding of it to an extent. Now, knowledge and understanding do, transcend just knowing what is written. Knowledge is also experiential. So that means you can take up a knowledge that is written about you and try to work experientially in it. Now, what have we received from the Father? We receive the Spirit of the Son. We receive the deposit of the Holy Ghost. So it means in every believer is a deposit of the Holy Ghost. But does every believer understand the capacities of the Holy Ghost in them? Not everyone even knows that they've been led by the Spirit before. A, a, a Christian, and they have, you ask a Christian, because they don't speak in tongues, they say, I have not, I've, I've not received the Holy Ghost. No, you have received the Holy Ghost. No, you have. And the Holy Ghost in you is... Very powerful. It's at work. But how will what is going on in you start profiting you more? By acknowledging. By coming to understand. Because we need to bear fruit in what we've received. It says if you don't bear fruit, the Father will come and cut you off. John 17. But it's not we are bearing fruit in righteousness. Right? <laughs> so that you will not go home and say, this guy said the Father is going to cut me out of the tree. Jesus said, those that the Father has put in my hands, no one can take them away. No one. So he says, anyone that the Father has, actually, hi, you know, if we believe the scriptures right, there are many things we will not be praying for. You will start understanding how, how much God invested in bringing you to the knowledge of Christ. He says, no one comes to me except the Father draws them. So, you that thought you just heard because they were born in a Christian home. No, it's a drawing. Now, maybe I should say this. Because I'm, I was also born in a Christian home. And I grew up as a child. 
I had certain things I was put through, like trainings in righteousness. Now, I might not be doing those things in right knowledge. So I might be serving in those aspects without even a complete knowledge of what is going on. But is the power of God at work in those institutions? Yes. Do you understand where I'm coming from? We did not fall from the sky. There was a move. In, actually, if you go and sit down, eh, anything that we think we are, our generation is doing, except before tongues came out. I'm telling you that there was a move of God in the heart of your mom, in the heart of your dad, in your family, in, in the church where you came from, in your back, our own background. There was a move of God there. But the problem was most of us were not discerning of what was working out, out in us. So we are just doing it like, ah, it's by compulsion. Why do you think it's easy for you to serve now? There are people that the same word you receive, they've received it, but service is still difficult for them. The reason why is that it's, you were put in some certain trainings, but because you are not aware that those trainings are bringing you to something much better, we now start feeling that, okay, when we started understanding was when the work started. No. The work has been at work inside of you. We just lack understanding of what was at work. So it means, let me give you an example. The children that we have here, they might not completely understand what we are doing. But we are trying to explain it. So it means that what we should do better now, because what I'm trying to explain is, you didn't fall from the sky, you will have kids that will not fall from the sky. Meaning that you have to have a structure that will train them in righteousness, that will make them know what is at work in them. So that it will be more profiting to them than what it was to us. Am I making sense? So the truth of the matter is that if when you were 10 years old, you started understanding the power of God at work in your inside, you started knowing that you are, you are saved eternally, you started knowing that the power of God is at work in you heavily, it is even easier for children to function in the healing grace. They will just go, I have the Holy Ghost. I will lay hands and they will be healed. Imagine if they are taught to understand what is at work in them. He says, train up a child in the way he should grow. Then when he grows, he will not depart from it. So it means the training. So most times, what happens to, what happened to most of us is that we are trained, but we did not understand what the training was about. So we are just being trained. And then we now gathered ourselves in love dominion. But I'm trying to tell you that those trainings were the drawings of God. So you, you did not just come out and bam. I, now I love the Lord so much. Oh, my heart is sold out for you. No, it started somewhere. Let me give you an example. I remember in this parable of the sower. You know they said some of the seed will fall on the stony ground. And the birds will take it. And some of the seed will now enter. And then it will spring forth and bear fruit. So we will now go later into food bearing. But let me explain this. If you are into construction, if you know how to construct a house, we always do a foundation. There is something called foundation. I'm not an architect, but kind of have an idea. In the country where I'm from, we don't use excavators and tractors to dig the foundation. We have an instrument that is, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a digger. That's what I call it. So it's like it has a pointed mouth, and then the back is kind of flattened. Media, if they do that too today, I'll be very glad. But I don't think they will. Because it's, they might not even understand what I'm trying to explain. So now, follow me. So, at first, your heart, because the Bible says he has given us heart of flesh. But you might still be thinking, because the truth of the matter is that you need to know what is at work in you. So if you don't even know that you have the heart of flesh, and you come with the heart of stone, and you come in the presence of God in those systems, at first, because I want to show you that the power of God has always been at work. So, the preacher is holding a digger. And then he's hammering the heart of stone in your heart. He's hammering the heart of stone in your heart. Breaking it out to become losing. Another preacher will come and do another work. I don't know if I'm making sense. So, let's say the system you first entered, it was softening your heart. Getting it ready. For when the word will come so that it will be engrafted. You don't need to see those systems as they were not working in the power of God. There it, that your heart is also ready for the word is the power of God that made it possible. 
So it means the power of God has been at work in your inside. You just need to become sensitive, aware of it. Pastor will say things like, when we sow seed and the falls by the roadside, we go and take broom and sweep it inside the right heart. It's your job. It's our responsibility. How, how do I take broom to do that? After I teach the word, I will go home and then, Father, let the people that heard it, let it profit them. Because the only thing I can do is to speak the word. The, the, it's now left for you and the enablement of the Holy Ghost to start now causing a conviction in your heart. And when we say conviction, it's not always, ah, you did that bad. You, no, conviction is also bringing your awareness. You are growing in consciousness of what is at work. Now, why do I need to grow in consciousness of what is at work? Because I need to become fruitful. I need to now start, what? They just told me five minutes. Ah, okay, because I'm still in one line. I'm really, okay, sorry guys. Wow, media, don't detect. Oh. Ah. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's do Philippians 1. Let's do Philippians 1. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But I hope, we, I, hope I made sense, right? Okay, because we, I'm just trying to bring our attention into fruit bearing. And how to bear fruit is by starting to acknowledge, by starting to understand what is at work in you. Because it will not profit us anything that we gather together every Sunday, every week, and we share the word, and the word does not profit us. The word does not yield anything to us. Hallelujah. All right, so let's see Philippians 1. Ah, I can't. Da, 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 da. Let's do from verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more where in knowledge and what? All discernment. Oh, they used all judgment there. Here yeah, they used all discernment. In knowledge, that may abound more and more in knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense, what? Till the day of the Lord. Verse 11, let's read. Being filled with what? The fruit of what? Which are by what? Jesus unto the glory of God. So it means we need to let our love abound more and more in knowledge and full discernment. Then we will be able to approve the things that are excellent. And in doing these things, then we are full with the fruits of righteousness. You see? So the end game of the plan of the Father is to bring us to bearing of fruits. Unto what? Righteousness. Right? Let's see also Colossians. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Colossians chapter 1. Let's do. They put a long reading here, but I don't think. Okay, let's see verse. Uh... No, let's see from verse 9, actually, because I don't want us to read long. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. And to ask that you may be filled with what? The knowledge of his will. So the complete epignosis of his will. In all what? Wisdom and spiritual what? Why? That you may walk what? Uh -huh. Fully pleasing him. And then doing what? So being fruitful. In every good work. And as you are being fruitful in the good work, you are also increasing in the knowledge of God. The more you start bearing fruit, the more in depth of the knowledge of God you will receive. You just need to be discerning of the word. It says that they will be filled with the knowledge in knowing of his will. His will. Act, ah, maybe I should not go there. That you should be filled with the knowing, complete knowing of his will. In all wisdom and full understanding from the spirit. That discernment from amplified version, it will be like to come in full understanding. Full understanding that comes by the spirit. So it means that there is a complete understanding that the Holy Ghost helps you to receive. 
Now, that understanding will now make us to walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. So, as we are walking worthy of the Lord, what we are doing is good work. He says, he's, he's the one at working us both to will and to do unto his good pleasure. So, as I'm doing the good work, I'm also being fruitful in the good work. And my knowledge about God will also start increasing. That knowledge is now not theoretical knowledge anymore. It's now an experiential knowledge. Because the more you understand the love of God, the more you can experience the love of God. If you don't know how God loves, you cannot experience his love. So you will be stuck in theoretical knowledge. If you don't know how God saves, you cannot experience the saving abilities of God. If you don't know how God renews the mind, you can, your mind will not be renewed. So you will be stuck with, I have information. But you need to engage this information. You need to come to full discernment of this information that you have. Then from the right understanding of this information, what now happens? You begin to bear fruit. Unto what? Righteousness. In another verse, it says, uh, 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 fruit unto perfection, unto maturity. Remember, we've heard that word again, maturity, perfection. In Ephesians, it says, he, he gave us pastors, teachers, for the equipping of the saints, till we come together in the unity of faith, that at some point will now become matured, not being tossed by every sound and wind of doctrine. How did, you, did we come to full maturity? After we've been taught right, after we've understood right, then you become fully matured. Now, that maturity now aids you to do the good work. Hallelujah. So, can everybody say, in me is the Holy Ghost? In me is the Holy Ghost. In me is the ability to do good works. All right. So, let's keep going. So, we've seen... Let's now do some, touch some scriptures in the old. Let's see. How is there a correlation between word and good works and all this? Joshua chapter 1. I'm, I'll be very quick. I think I, will be, I should be done in maybe 10 minutes. Protocol, please. Help me. Hi, God. Anyways, the, the, our whole aim is for us to be blessed. As I'm teaching you, when I go home, I, I sit down and I listen. Because it's not like I crammed what I'm saying in my head from my house. Then I'll come. Then I'll now pour it out to you. No. So, because when I go home, I, I also listen. Because I believe I will be blessed too. Like, you need to believe these things. That's what I'm trying to do. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua, Joshua chapter 1. Media. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Actually, that's where we just want to do. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall do what? Meditate in it day and night. So that, that what will not happen? That thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. So you can see the clause there. The plan of God is the, as you meditate, you will make your ways prosperous. But there is a, there is a clause there. You will meditate. The reason for your meditation is so that you will observe to do. So, because we always say, ah, we meditate, then we we'll, we'll make our ways prosperous. But before your ways become prosperous, you need to observe to do. There is only one prosperous road, and that is the road of the will of God. Am I making sense? So, the reason why God, outside of God, is right. So, why Adam... When God told Adam, choose life. Uh, uh, when God gave Adam two choices, three of good and three of knowledge of good and evil and three of life. And he did not choose life. What Adam automatically chose was death. Because that's outside God's will. So that means if you do not observe to do, you don't meditate on the word. You will not observe to do because the word is what will tell you where is God's path. So that you will be following God's path. In this following of God's path, you are going to be bringing forth fruit unto righteousness. And then your ways will become prosperous. It's no magic science. 
you need to go to the word, meditate on it. Meditation actually means don't let the word depart from your mouth. So that means if you want to, if maybe the devil is pondering your heart about fear and you know you've got no fear, what do you do? You take a scripture. Joshua, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, right? God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of sound mind. So I don't just say it. I keep meditating on it. I've not got the spirit of fear. I've got power. I've got love. I've got sound mind. I don't have the spirit of fear. At some point, it starts to resonate inside of you. Now, what will happen when the word comes alive is that you will start doing what you could not do. And that thing that you could not do, you are no longer doing it by your own enablement because you naturally is fearful. But from your meditation of the word, you have come to understand that I've, I don't have the spirit of fear. Then you go out and start doing the things you could not do before. You go out with boldness, start engaging life. So you, you, you wake up from your slumber, start engaging life. How? By what you've known that God has done for you. Hallelujah. All right. So in Joshua 1, he says that we may observe to do. So we meditate, observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then we will make our ways prosperous and then we will have what? Good success. Let's see Psalm 1. I'm now in a hurry. I think. Let's do Psalm 1. Good. From verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. And his law, what does he do? He meditates day and night. So what, what will now happen to this guy that is meditating day and night? Verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted where? That will do what? Bring forth its fruit in its season. So Jesus was passing a fig tree. And he wanted figs. And there was no fig tree. So what did he do to the fig tree? He cursed it. Meaning it, it was actually the season of fig to, be, to come out. But fig did not come out. So now it means that you can meditate on God's word. So that in the season... When you need to bear fruit, you will have fruit. It's not every, it's, I, I don't want to say it's not in every season that you are bearing fruit. But it will be different timing for people. It, it might take her one month to bear fruit unto righteousness. Not because we are just hearing together. It's possible she came from a generation of people that every night in their house, they might be praying all through the night. And as a child, she, she entered that system without right knowledge. But all of a sudden, he, she comes and she hears the right word. And the quick things quickly in her heart. Then you that came from somewhere that everything the family has been doing is occultic something. And they are trying to teach you the word. Then you start saying, ah, I'm not bearing fruit. No, the word is working in you. It's working in you. All you need to do is just meditate on it. So that when it's your season to, bear, to have fruit, the father will come and see fruit. The season, you, you, I, go, 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 go. How do I, I know how to explain it. Yes. So let me say this. No, I won't say it. I don't like sharing personal experiences. So let's leave it. So it means you can bring fruit unto righteousness. You can in, in the right season. But what will make you have fruit in the right season? Meditating in the word. Let that be your delight. So let that be what pleases your heart. You take the word, you ponder on it, you hide it inside your heart. So it means, it says the word of God is quick and powerful. It can discern even the soul and the spirit. So you can go to the word of God. Let it start discerning your thoughts. What in my thought needs to be worked on? Stop looking towards another person. Stop looking, ah, this needs to be happening there, this needs to be happening there. What is happening inside of you? Have you become aware that something is going on in your spirit? Can you pay more attention to it? The way to hear from God the more is to know that he's speaking to you. The way to hear from him the more is to know how, 
one, he's speaking to me, and two, how does he speak to me? Then I will go and be paying more attention to how he speaks. So the same way, our my, my plea with everybody is that we need to come into fruit bearing. Fruit bearing. And the only way to come into fruit bearing is to go and sit with the word and let it influence your thought, your mind. Let it let it let it move you to do the will of the Father, to do the good works, to pray, to study, to pray for your brethren, to have love walk. All right, let's see. Let's see something else. I've, I've, we've seen Colo did, we see, did we read Colossians one? No way. Colossians one. I want us to read. All right, maybe we'll leave that. So. Let's see, I, I, I'm trying to do something about fruit here. Let's do Second Peter. Maybe this way I will end. So that protocol will not kill me. Then, well, I, I, I really didn't share much of what I have in mind. But I believe maybe one way or the other, the Holy Ghost will equip the world and then, where's my Second Peter? Victory, do you steal it from my Bible? All right, Second Peter, chapter. Let's do one. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith what virtue, to virtue what knowledge, to knowledge what self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness what love for what if these things are yours and abound so they are yours but you you need to make them abound right you will neither be barren nor what in the what so it means you can have the knowledge of our lord jesus and be unfruitful so but you need to do some certain things he says, to your knowledge, add self-control. Do you know why? Because knowledge perfect up. Because the more you are adding knowledge, adding knowledge, you will start feeling pompous. But he says, love edifies. So you still need to add anything you're doing in the body of Christ. The, mo the motive should be love. Hallelujah. Uh, like when you are operating with your own self, you can go to God the way you want. But when it comes to about the body of Christ, the motive has to be love. So it says, to knowledge, we add self-control. So that it will be easy for us to still come and correct in love, teach in love, direct in love. But at the end, when you've added all these things, what will happen? You will not be unfruitful in that knowledge that you've received. Because what I wanted to call this thing was, knowledge is life. Because the way I wanted to end was, 1 John 5, he says, we know that the Son has come and has given us an understanding, a knowing. And this knowing is life eternal, right? So this knowledge is what has life in it. So if we invest ourselves in the knowledge of Christ, we will be enjoying eternal life and we will be bearing fruit unto life. Our fruit will be unto righteousness. So when I say unto righteousness, unto life, it, there is only life in Christ Jesus. So if you yield yourself to the word, give all diligence to the word, growing in the word so that you will not be unfruitful. The father desires that everyone bears fruit. The fruit bearing can be hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. But make sure you bear fruit. And how to bear fruit is by staying with the word enough till it has come alive in you. Then it quickens you to bear fruit. Am I making sense? All right. Maybe I will read. Will you let me? Yeah, they will let me. They will let me. All right. Maybe I should just read this and then we'll go. Ephesians chapter 3. Maybe let's do chapter 4. 
Now, let's do from verse chapter 3. From verse 3. Chapter 3 from verse uh, 14. You know the Bible is not written in chapters and verses. So we're going to read it from chapter 3 into chapter 4. Right? For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with what? Mind through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to do what? Comprehend, may be able to understand with the sense what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height. To know what? The love of Christ, which does what? Passes knowledge, that you will now do what? Be filled with the food. So, the knowledge of the love of Christ to come to comprehend it right. The depth, the width, the height of the love. So the more you are comprehending it, the more you are full with the fullness of God head. Remember, we've seen someone being full of the fullness of God. Jesus, Colossians 1. He, he says, he pleased the Father that in him should dwell all the fullness of God head bodily. So how was he full of God? By comprehending the love of God. So you can come to comprehend that. And then you will be full of God, right? Verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us, to him be the glory to the church, da, 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 da. verse 4, chapter 4, sorry, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to do what? Walk worthy of what? Your calling. So, starting from, you need to comprehend God's love, you need to now be full of God's fullness, then he now says, walk worthy, so from this knowledge and comprehension, we will now walk worthy. Now, in the walking worthy, he now says, with all holiness, gentleness, long-suffering, bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the peace of unity. This same thing he wrote here is also what he mentioned in Galatians 5 as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So do you understand where, we, where we're going now? So it means that walking worthy, what starts happening in walking worthy will start seeing fruits of the spirit fruits of righteousness but it needs to come from comprehension you know what is at work you know how it's at, it's at work then from your knowledge you will now be enabled to walk worthy then in this walking worthy then because we saw the same walk worthy in colossians 1 but it, it we saw it in being filled with the knowledge of his will so that we will walk worthy now here it says walk worthy in all loneliness uh, uh, let's read it. In all loneliness, gentleness, long-suffering, bearing one another in love, and keeping the bond of peace. Because... Um, da, 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 da. Hallelujah. So it means that your comprehension, your understanding, if you are lacking fruits of righteousness, go and work on your understanding of what is at work in you. So if you need to bear much more fruit in righteousness, work on the understanding that you have about what is at work in you. The more you see, that's why the first time you come to love dominion, what, what if, if it's me or someone else, what they'll tell you is go and underline all the in him, in whom, in him we have redemption, in whom we've forgiven in Christ. Because you need to know what you have in him. It will aid you in your prayer life, in your study life. It will aid you even in your own personal life. Because when you know what God has done for you, it will be easy for you to receive what he has done. So most of the time, we are asking God for what he has already done. And the reason is because of ignorance. So we need to go and know what has he done. So we align with it. We, we meditate on it day and night until we observe to do. Don't just meditate and quickly go. So after you've meditated on the love of God, you need to observe yourself. Am I expressing the love of God? So let's say you take yourself and you say, I want to meditate on prayer. And you start meditating on prayer. And after the meditation, you've not been equipped to start praying. Bro, keep meditating. Am I making sense? Don't stop the meditation until you've started seeing the observing to do. So you need to work on your, your feel that I have a proud heart. You go to the word and start working on your heart with the word of God. Meditating how he gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I need my heart to humble down. And you're praying. If you've not started working in humility, you need to keep meditating it. 
So you want to start walking in giving or in loving one another. Or you notice that, ah, there is so much discord everywhere. I need us to be more together in the bound of love. What do you need to do? You go sit down, start meditating on the unity of love, unity of peace. Then what will you start doing? You are observing to do. It's in the observing to do that we are Christians. So it's not in the acceptance. Because we can say, I'm a Christian, I'm born again. No, it's in the observing to do. Because people need to see the good work and glorify our what? Father which is in where? Heaven. So the end goal is to bring glory to the Father. But it's in your good work. And how will you get to being in good work? By investing your time in knowledge and understanding. He says, buy knowledge and don't sell it. So invest in it. Let it fill your being. Hallelujah. Can we just bow our heads? And just ask the Father to open our hearts for deeper understanding of His will. Just pray like that. I desire to know you more and more clearly. Open my heart to come to full understanding, full discernment of your will for me. To come to full understanding of the power that is at work inside of us. Help us to partner with your word. As we meditate upon it, may the power that flows through the word, may it come into our heart. Enabling us to walk worthy in fruit bearing. Because your plan is to, for us to bear fruits unto righteousness. So that every joint will supply rightly. Increasing even more and more. As a body. Help us father. Help us father. Glory be to your name Jesus. We thank you because your word is alive. And quickened in our heart. Dispelling every doubt. Dispelling every doubt. Dispelling every doubt. We are fully assured of your will. And we run with it. We walk in accordance with your will. And we see fruit bearing in right season. We see fruit bearing in right season. Thank you, Father.